welcome, welcome. Yes, welcome, welcome. Officially, welcome, welcome. We're excited to be here. Our second webcast of 2015. And we think it's going to go off without a hitch. So everyone cross your fingers and <laughs> see what happens. For those of you in the Northeast, don't cross your fingers because you need to cross your fingers for enough of your own issues. But the good news is you can't go anywhere because the whole Northeast Coast is kind of shut down and you can stay home and watch a webcast or not, or whatever you decide to do. Um, welcome again. We're, we're grateful you're here. We're thrilled to be here. We've got lots of good ideas planned for you and hopefully we'll have a great little lesson tonight and a great little interchange. So for our format, we will start off with our regular um, questions and answers at the beginning. And we are extremely excited that this whole transition has actually happened. So welcome, welcome. I think that is appropriate to say that at least twice. All right, how are we coming on questions? All right, we got a question. We got an audience and we got a question. Kathy, FYI, for my FYI, hi Kathy, I don't know who Kathy is, but that's okay. I know a lot of Kathy's. All right, instructions say to measure hip and use that size. Well, my hips are 44 and the size I used was 16. Hips 34. Maybe you could tell me what pattern it is? Maybe, is it the yoga pant? Um, we're going to find out. Yeah, just, you know, whenever sometimes we ask questions, and, and I do it all the time too, I just assume that you guys know what I'm talking about. My children say to me all the time, like, maybe you could tell us what's in your mind that you're not telling us. <laughs> you know, we just kind of assume you know what pattern we're talking about and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, maybe we could talk about patterns. Which pattern? I'm going to guess it's the yoga pant because that's the only... That's the only one it could be. Hate to assume that, but we'll wait till she comes back and says what pattern it is. For the sweater set 195, how would you change a dart? It terminates, it stops too high. So all you're going to do is stop stitching, just back it off. I actually have that pattern um, actually right here. So this is pattern number 195, sweater set. I'll kind of go to this underneath part, so maybe you can you can see with this stripe here that there's the French dart. It goes right through there. So with a French dart, and the the beauty of the French dart is you never need to use a length and or short line uh, to move the bust down or move the bust dart up. It is a bust dart. It's the waist dart. It's combined. And just if it comes up too high, just stop stitching sooner. It'll be in the right place. Um, if the pattern's actually cut away, then you, you won't be able to fix it on that one, but just leave it, leave the fabric there, don't cut up quite as far, and then just stop stitching earlier. I always start at the point because you'll make it a little more gradual transition and then stitch all the way down. Okay, so with the French dart, it's, it's a great dart because it's so easy to fit a multitude of bust lengths, if that's the appropriate way to say that. All right. Oh, 5019 the leggings. Oh, that makes even more sense. Okay, so 5019 the leggings, you're dealing with stretch fabric. So when you're dealing with stretch fabric, especially leggings, because it, um, one way stretch has a different amount of stretch than even two way stretch. So you can be all over the board on that size. You really can. Um, I'm just going to say to you, whenever you're making the leggings, I recommend that you um, go bigger than you think you are and then work it back. For instance, for myself, I've made everything from a size 2 to it literally to a size 18. So it just all depends on your fabric. Um, it would be hard to measure that, but still measure and go to the larger size and you can always make it smaller. You can always take in the side seams if you need to. But once it's too small, it's too small. So I was going to say, the leggings, that makes even more sense than the yoga pants. Sometimes with the yoga pant, though, we go down a size, we go down two sizes. But I sh probably should have known it was the leggings. All right, does that help? I hope that helps. Okay, I'm going to do a blouse. Oh, I am doing a blouse. And on the placket, 
under the collar. It seems to buckle like there's too much fabric at the neck. How can you fix that? Well, not knowing what you're talking about, but but just listening to you, whenever you have a buckle, a buckle is saying to me that there's too much fabric. Um, so I'm assuming that there's too much length. So when you have too much length, just take and take it away. So at the neck edge, I think I have a neck edge here. At the neck edge right here, just drop this down just a little bit and then rejoin that. Now when you do that, it's going to make the neck edge just a little bit longer. So go ahead and measure the original length, measure the new length, and then add that much to the collar. But that um, that buckling is there. But are you wearing the collar closed? Because if, if it's 600 blouse, you guys, when you ask questions, if they reference a pattern, if you'll tell me the pattern number, um, for instance, let's use 600 as an example. 600 is the classic blouse. And purposely, that blouse is cut high because most women do not wear it closed. In fact, 99.9% .9 don't wear it closed. And so when it's worn open, the collar actually is higher and it has a better look. If you lower that and then add the collar to it, when the collar is worn open, the lapel, the collar starts to come down around the bust area and it's not a good look. So that neckline is purposely drafted up higher so that as it's worn open, the collar will look better because it's meant to be worn open. So that's a purposeful style thing that we're doing. Um, if you are going to close the neckline up, then it, it will probably be too high and like you said, buckle. But I don't know if you're talking about 600 or if you're talking about um, another blouse pattern. Okay, But buckling, in my opinion, is always too much length at that place. Okay. Okay, the next question. On pattern 500, the shoulder straps are too wide on my shoulders. They drop off. How do I move them in? And what do to do with the arm sky? Well, um, I would say go to a smaller size. And if I said go to a smaller size, you would say you can't, maybe, because you need that size for your bust. So in order to get it to fit your bust, the arm the um, shoulder straps are too wide. If that's the case, I'm going to put a dart. I'm going to put a dart right at center front, and then I'm going to taper that, that dart to nothing. So the dart is right here, and then the dart tapers to nothing slowly, slowly, all the way to the hem. So the center front is still a straight line. I just cha It just changes the angle, and it brings those straps in. That's one way. The other way is I literally could just draw those straps in. Um, or I could go from one size in the bust to another th size in the shoulders. There's kind of numerous ways to do it. Um, it's all dependent on do you need the circumference of the bust for the bust. If you don't need it, go to a smaller size, obviously. But I'm going to assume you asked that question, you needed it at the bust. All right, Peggy, I have made your patterns. I do not know how to go from 6W to 8W with the French Start 195. Whenever you are changing the French dart, close it. Close up the tissue. Close up the tissue. When you close up the tissue, the side seam becomes a straight angle line. So you can then angle it from the 6 to the 8. But close it up. Draw your, si your new side seam going from 6 to 8. Open the dart. And then you'll extend the dart lines into the new side seam. You'll see it'll be very easy. The whole key, close up the dart. That's it. Just close the dart when you go to go when you ch change the side seam. Okay. Yeah, that blouse was the classic blouse. Don't try to close it because it's purposely drafted up higher, so that the style when worn open will be appropriate. So if that's the one you're doing, I wouldn't change it. Okay. All right. On the 195 top, I get gapping at the neck. On 195, you get gapping at the neck. That's really unusual because the something's wrong. Uh, and the reason I say that is I fit that thing on, I don't know how many thousands of women. Um, and the shoulder angle might be wrong. If, if your sh shoulders are more square, it will cause the neck to gap. So 
Yes, you could do all that. You could, um, she said, I guess I should finish the question. I'm sorry. Would I dart that out to the armhole or take it out to the center fold and taper to nothing at the hem? You should definitely take it to the armhole. If you need two little darts at the neckline, you should definitely take it to the armhole. But a, a neckline, the reason I'm stuttering <laughs> is necklines gap when they're moved down. They don't gap in their natural position. That's a jewel neck. 195 has a jewel neck. So that's not logical to me that it's gapping so the only thing I can come up with is that maybe if your shoulders are more square than the pattern then it's causing the shoulders to sit up higher and the front to gap but it's not a fault of the neckline it's a fault of the shoulders so what I'm gonna say to you is check the shoulders first and see if by changing the angle of the shoulders you can get rid of that gap um, only necklines only gap when they are lowered generally not in their natural positions. Okay? Let's try that just as a kind of a heads up. All right. What's the fabric on the 195 wool sweater set? Wool. No. <laughs> Wait. Is this a trick question? Oh, this one you mean? This one. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a <laughs> This is a silk. <laughs> yeah, on the wool sweater set. This is a silk. It's a stretch silk. It's an absolutely gorgeous fabric. It cost a million dollars. I got it in New York. It was only what was available. And, you know, I couldn't get it for you all. I always get for you all when I can. That's the reason you want to go to New York is because I can't get everything for you. There's a lot of great stuff left. But anyway, it's a, it's a stretch silk. All right, pattern number 1850. Pattern 1850 was the pattern of the month for November. The red black sweater knit in 1850. Love that sweater. I wear it all the time. Did you cut the front facing and insert the ribbing inside that seam or did you eliminate the facing and just sew the selvage as in top stitch? Okay, I eliminated the facing and I just sewed that uh, the the, um, I cut this selvage like about, well, the width of the ribbing. You'll be able to see the ribbing. So I cut it about a um, quarter of an inch outside of the ribbing. And then, and I cut that long strand. And then I just sewed that on all the way around the front edge. So I didn't have a facing. And I just cut the self, I, I sewed the selvage right sides together um, all the way around the front of the sweater. And then just pressed it. And it pressed very well. So it worked really, it was really easy to work with. Very easy. And I've worn it and worn it in that it really holds up very well also. Would a selvage edge look okay in the shawl collar seam of 1950? Absolutely, absolutely. When we did our Toys for Tots jackets, jacket, <laughs> um, I did that boucle and I use the selvage in the trim. That, that's exactly what I did. Selvages are beautiful. We play so much with selvages. I was in California over the weekend um, doing the three-day workshop. And Jill, we have to give a shout out to Jill, our Australian friend. This is her second workshop that she's come in from Australia for. And so we have one koala bear for each workshop. Okay, so there's one koala bear and two koala bears. We have one for each workshop she's been to. And she's coming back for more, she said. So as she comes back for more, we'll add koala bears to our photograph. But anyway, she had a really beautiful kind of a cotton silk slub. And her selvage was really pretty. And so she used that as her trim. Absolutely. Always look at your selvage because it's such a built-in, you know, trims are hard. Great trims are hard to find. Great trims that coordinate with your fabric. And you see them in ready wear and they're just gorgeous. So always use your trims. And to me, it alters what actually what I make with the jacket. If I see a trim and it's, I mean, a selvage, and it would work as a trim, I think twice about what I'm going to make with the fabric so that um, I can, you know, utilize that selvage into the garment. Absolutely. Can you please tell me where each of the woven pants should sit? On the hip or at the waist? You guys, pants should sit wherever you want them to. Um, you know, each of the pants patterns, I don't know, pull them up. Can you pull up all those pants? I, I don't know if I'll remember them all. Pattern number 3000 is a pleated pant. It should sit at the waist. Pattern number 3100 is an elastic pant. It should sit at the waist. But again, I wear 3100 on my hips. So, 
you don't have to do it where we intended it. You, it's easy enough to pull it up or down. Pattern 3009 is a capri. That's a high hip uh, because it has a contoured waistband. Generally, you can look at the pattern itself because it's a contoured waistband that's meant to go just slightly below the waist. Um, how am I doing? Pattern number 3200 comes to the waist, but again, I fit that pattern on women all day long, and they say, I don't like it on my waist. I want it here, and I just chop it off, you know, lower. Uh, pattern 3300 is a jean. It goes to the high hip. Pattern 3400 is a yoga pant. And pattern 3011, pattern 3413, those are all yoga pants. They sit high hip also. I think this is a memory test. Pattern number... Um, 3414 Jags also sits below the waist. 3500 is the um, Carolyn's cargo pant. The cargo pant is very similar to the jean and the fit, so it's also below the waist, kind of a high hip. 3600 is Ralph's pant, and it is the same as the Capri. They have a, a contoured waistband. When they have a contoured waistband, then they sit below. I call it a high hip. It's not really a hip hip to me is a little bit lower, but I, I think what you're saying is high hip. They sit below the waist. So really the only ones that sit at the waist are 3,200 and 3,000, and those can be lowered very easily. Okay, does that help? Does that give you a rundown? When will series 300, will series 300 be mailed out? Like a week ago? <laughs> those were all gone a week ago Friday. A week ago Friday. So last Friday would have been I don't know, the 20th maybe? The 20th, so the 13th? They, you know, they, there was a holiday though, Martin Luther King, and it didn't slow down our shipping, but no question it slowed down the post office. No question, because, um, you know, we normally hear pretty quick, once we ship out, that people have gotten things, and I'm just now hearing emails, oh, I just got it, I just got it. So that's really, you know, they must have been really inundated over Martin Luther King holiday or, or in closing down that day. So everything's been in the mail 10 days ago, so you should have it any day. All those were mailed out. Are your jeans patterns designed for stretch denim? Um... Yes and no. A jeans pattern is not designed, f we're going to talk about that tonight. A, a jeans pattern is not designed for a fabric because I could use, if I'm going to use a stretch, then I could use the jeans pattern, but I could go down several sizes, or I mean, maybe not several sizes, but maybe go down a size, so I'm relying on that stretch to fit. So tonight when we go from a jean to like a skinny jean is really what I want to talk about. What changes do we have to make? That's, uh, we'll, we'll get into a little more detail on that a little bit later on. Okay. All right. So good. Very good. It's so good to be back. It feels good to be back. We, we have all kinds of better, more improved things going on. And we're still working. We've still got some goals and deadlines that we're working on and things we're going to change. So we appreciate you all being here listening. Um, things are going great business-wise. Great new things on the horizon, great new ideas. We're really pushing the limits as to what we're doing and what we can do. We have great new exciting ideas. Uh, the new patterns are going to go on sale next Tuesday. The top I have on is one of the new patterns, pattern number 315. It's called BCBG, if you know that designer. BCBG's top. We will not have a pre-sale on the new patterns. We will have a pre-sale price for one week, starting next Tuesday. It'll go for seven days from Tuesday to Tuesday. Um, but we will ship the patterns immediately. And that's simply because as we um, grow as a company, the goal is to how can we reduce the number of emails? And we want you all to ask questions. You know, that's please don't think this is an issue. But how can we communicate more effectively? Or how can we reduce unnecessary emails? One unnecessary email that we get, in fact, we get about 800 of them, is when is my DVD going to arrive? And it was a pre-sale, so it wasn't going to even arrive. They weren't even going to be shipped until mid-January, but I get that email in December. And I don't just get one of them, I get 400 of them. So we're going to stop pre-sales so that we stop, um, I think at the time you order them, you, you know they're a pre-sale, but you forget, and then this order hasn't arrived and you want to know where it is. And we get some very angry people. <laughs> so we're going to stop that and just going to honor the pre-sale price. We'll extend the pre-sale price for one week. We'll ship the patterns immediately. 
and then they'll go up to regular price. So that's our new way to res um, to kind of reduce the number of emails that we have in house. All right, but as far as your questions, keep asking. Don't even worry about that stuff. All right, so our goal tonight, especially again, it's it's cold. It's getting ready. Spring is around the corner. We hope it's around the corner. Groundhog Day. We'll find out how much more winter we have. But this is an absolutely wonderful time to really make a literally physical note as to what we are going to do for uh, wardrobe plans. I'm a big believer in planner. I think that if we don't plan, especially in clothing, we love clothes. People, you know, we wouldn't sew if we didn't love clothes. Or maybe that's not true, but maybe I can speak for myself. I love clothes. How's that? I love clothes, but I don't like having too many. I don't like feeling like I don't have anything to wear. I, I want to have go-to clothes that I feel like I can get and reach all the time. So there's a concept, it's called 365. And this is a way, I'm gonna use myself as an example in this, but I really want you to apply it to yourself. And that way you can make clothes that are perfect for your lifestyle. The three events, three things that you go to in your life. So for me, my three things are going to be my social, my just around the house and my business those are my three things that I go to social party business and just comfortable running to the grocery store but when I run to the grocery store I don't I don't want to wear a suit but I all oh, I want to look nice I want to look nice it's not for anybody else it's simply because I want to look nice so those are my three occasions so each of you should write down three places that you go and you want to make them different now my three occasions might change for instance if I'm going on a beach vacation, then my three occasions might be the beach, the beach, and the beach. <laughs> you know, the beach, a restaurant, and you know, maybe to a friends or something of that nature. So right now we're going to have three occasions that we decide upon and we're going to pick six patterns that work for those occasions. Those six patterns should be really, really good basic. Now the wardrobe base, the sale that we've got going on, ends on Thursday. I picked three patterns. I picked a jean because a jean at this day and age should be a part of anyone's wardrobe. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, a jean is there and I want to show you and we'll talk about how to make it a skinny jean as well. Um, the jacket, I'm going to take a jacket tonight and I'm going to take it from spring, from fall to spring. What I did is I chose six patterns and I, I made them right now for fall for winter I mean and then I used those exact same patterns and I made a spring wardrobe out of them also but I took one piece which is the jacket 1350 Janie's jacket and I'm taking it both to winter and I'm taking it into spring as well and I'll talk about why and how I did that um, so those six pieces that I chose were again the jean I chose the 575 I chose a blouse something I could do as a white classic blouse something I could do as a tunic I could lengthen it I mixed all those things in together. I chose a t-shirt. For me, I chose 195. I chose 1350 was the jacket. I said that 575 Sonia's blouse was my classic blouse. I chose a skirt and I would recommend you, not necessarily for winter, you don't need to, but a skirt in wintertime with tights is a great look. And then I can take that same pattern and make it out of a real fun floral glitzy thing for spring. So the skirt that I chose was 2850, which is Michelle's skirt, and then I chose a dress. So is that six? I'll go over them. And then I chose a dress. The dress I chose was 4014. Again, a really fun floral dress. It came out last year, the 4014, which is called Shelly's dress. I could not get out of it. I just I had made it up in several different fabrics, and I coated it every day last summer. It's really disgusting, but I just really, really enjoyed the dress. Modest, flattering, comfortable, all those things. Um, but also earlier in a webcast, I showed how to make a top out of it. So for the winter time, I made a top, and for the summertime, I made a dress. And then of course, the top goes with my jeans. So let me just name the patterns again. And again, it doesn't matter what patterns you choose. I just chose, these are the reasons I chose what I chose because I felt like they were great basics. I chose a dress, 4014. I chose a skirt, which was 2850. I chose a jacket, which was 1350. I chose a pant, a jean, which was 3300. I chose a t-shirt, which is 195. And I chose a blouse, which was 575. Those were my six patterns, okay. Now I'm going to show you and we're going to talk about all them. The other thing you should do is choose five accessories. So 
do you want them to transition? Of course you do, and they should, and they can. So they want to be able to transition. And, and again, I think that I do travel a lot, and it's so nice to be able to just throw something in really quick and feel good about what you threw in and know that it will go and last and last. So my five accessories, and let's talk about accessories right now, and then I'll back up and go back to the clothes. Um, one of the things I want to show you tonight is how to do an unlined jacket. The 1350 does have a lining. I get a question an awfully lot. I want to make this unlined. How do I do that? I'm going to show you how to do that um, and tell you the steps to change. And then we're going to do a few pattern changes with some of the blouses, with some of the patterns that we chose. All right, so my five accessories are going to be my flats. And whenever I have a pair of flats, it seems like I wear them and wear them and wear them, and they always wear out too soon. So now I've learned that when I buy a pair of flats and when I really, really like them, I get two pair because I really, really like them. And I know I'm not going to get tired of them, and I know they're terrific. And so I go ahead and get two pairs at one time, um, and I just never have regretted. I've never felt like, gee, I wish I didn't have the second pair. It's really worked well for me. Then another pair of shoes I should have, if I can, is just a very small heel because with peep toe, you want an open toe shoe. And that, in the wintertime, we're seeing them now even with tights. And then in the summertime, of course, I can wear them with a nude leg. If I can't do that, just get another pair of flats and just have two pair of flats, but have one open toe and one closed toe. I live in a warm climate, so I do a sling back. But if you don't live in a warm climate, then just do a open toed um, slip on. Okay? All right, so the other accessory then, two pairs of shoes. And again, if you don't, I, I love shoes. So of my five accessories, two were shoes. They certainly don't have to be. Get a great bag. Get a great bag. I have a tendency to, at one time in my life, had, I, it's embarrassing to admit, but I did. I worked with um, a company called Brighton. I, I, I did some of their things in their showroom. And so um, they were always gifting me bags or, you know, whatever I wanted. But anyway, I never used any of those bags. And so I had a whole closet full of bags and I just never used them all. I'm not a, I'm not a real changer of bags. Some women are excellent about that. They Everywhere they go, they have a bag to match. And I'm not interested in doing that. So I want one bag and I have found a bag and I keep buying the same bag over and over. Um, it just really works for me. It works when I go out of town for business. It, it carries a lot, but it still carries nothing. It does well. So just get a great bag that you love, that you feel really comfortable in. Mine's black because it simply goes with everything. And unless I'm going to something really special, I have a few little clutches. It's kind of all I use. All right, the next accessory then is a belt. I should have a great belt. And the belt in this case is one that just uniformly goes all over the place. And a few webcasts ago, I taught you how to do it and how to make an inexpensive version of it. That's just a great belt. It works. It's contemporary. It just goes a million miles. And then the last accessory that I chose because it's so popular these days is a little cape. And I could say cape. I could say scarf. And for me, I did a cape that turned into a scarf. And I, I think I've showed, not this one, but I think I've showed you the idea before I made another one. And I made this one for spring. It's, um, this is that navy blue black ridges. It's a mohair. It's beautiful. On the, it's just really a beautiful fabric. This is pattern 83. It's a little wrap. This was an Ellie Tahari. It's a great little piece. And then just, there's a seam across the back. And in that seam across the back, I put a zipper, and I put a separating zipper, so I could separate that zipper, and then I could simply use this as a scarf as well. So I, it really gives me a double duty to wear, I want a cape or a scarf, because in the winter I want a scarf, and then as it warms up, I just want a little covering over my shoulders. And so it really lasts a much longer period of time, and I love it. As an accessory, I could wear it over and over again, and I just really like it, and I feel very comfortable in it. All right, so those are my five accessories. Honestly, I think that for, for many of us who like clothes, our closets are very quick to get overwhelmed, and they are better if they're cleaner and more conservative, and I cleaned mine out a couple weeks ago, and I won't even tell you how many trips in my car of going to Goodwill it took me 
but that's a clue that it was more than one and you know other than that it's just embarrassing so there's no reason to be that honest okay um so first off let's look at my fall my winter wardrobe because right now it's still cold well it's it's hot and cold here so cold clothes are still needed and it's really fun to have them and so all those six patterns i made up in a cold climate um, concept where they could be worn i'll show those to you the first this is my little this is my dress except it's made into a top and I did that short little top so that I could wear it with my jeans and in this case I went ahead and I did dark jeans so that I could wear my top with them didn't do really any changes to the pattern in the previous webcast I showed you how to take that um, top and make it I mean how to take the dress and make it into a top okay then again with my jeans I did a little sweater set and so this works great. Um, I did purposely like a vibrant fabric that was warm, but also it had a little um, shell underneath so that as I added on and made multiple pieces, I could simply make a solid top to go with. But that was my sweater set that I did. All right, then I did um, 575, the Sonia blouse, a great blouse. I did a suede blouse because all of our blouses are wonderful, but a suede blouse um, or maybe a little leather trim, it's so stylish right now that I went ahead and did a suede blouse. This is kind of a pinky salmon-y color and I just love it. Just absolutely love it. Long sleeve. With my skirt, what I did is I did 2850 and I took each piece and instead of going out at the bottom, when it comes, I just went straight down. So actually, I made and then I made the middle six pieces one color and then I made the side panels black so that it works really well with uh, my top here if I decide to wear it with my top I can do that or if the jacket that I've also made the jacket is 1350 and it's out of the navy Italian denim and then I put some leather and, and you'll get to see a real close-up of this because I'm going to take it off the mannequin if you notice it's only got one sleeve in it because I want to set the second sleeve in tonight I want you to watch that and it's also unlined and I want to go inside of it and show you kind of what's inside okay so my six pieces now are the jeans the blouse or the t-shirt the, um, the sweater set so that's the second t-shirt that's actually my dress is a t-shirt and then this one, the skirt, and my jacket. Those are my six pieces. Now, I threw in one other piece, and that one other piece that I threw in is my white blouse. So I'm going to take this off, and I went ahead and made just a little sleeveless white blouse because sleeveless white blouse, blouses have lots and lots of uses, especially on their own, but um, under a cape. They look great it, as the weather starts to warm a little bit. I can put a cape on them. They just really have a nice look. The edges on the cape on this particular fabric, yeah, the edges are selvage. On this side, they're selvage. I just put it right on the selvage. And then this side, they're turned under and stitched. Can they see? Or is that okay? Okay. All right, so anyway, this when I have something sleeveless like this, this makes a great little combination for that cape, or if I'm under a coat or something like that. Now, the pattern change that I wanted you to see is I love 575. I love the neckline, but sometimes I want to have a collared blouse. So I took the 575, and I made I took the collar from 600, which is classic blouse, and I put it on 575. This fabric is the Zenia White you know it's just beautiful it's a crisp white wonderful fabric I love my blouse and just let me show you how to do that because if you take the collar this is the collar from 575 and this is the collar from 600 and if you lay those neck edges together you can actually see that they're the exact same length so I actually had to make no pattern changes at all simply once I put the front facing on I just literally sewed the blouse just like you would sew it onto the 600 neckline I sewed it onto 575 I just edge stitched it right in place all the way around just the only thing you need to do is when you're coming right up here with the facing you need to make sure that it's tucked under 
and you'll see when you get to do it it's a really I mean I just love the look it's a it's kind of a v-neck collared as opposed to having the fabric that folds back so again there's no changes uh, you can see that when I put the two collars together there's a center back unfold the shoulder markings are exactly the same and the length of the front of the collar is exactly the same so there was no changes to the pattern at all I simply took the collar from 600 and put it on to 575 and I really like the result no other changes took place okay okay so there's my winter I've got those six pieces they're sitting well there's seven with the white blouse they're sitting there on my rack and I can easily grab them if I'm going somewhere I can throw them all in and have several outfits to wear so six pieces really go a long way with my five accessories I can really change it up with my skirt maybe a little heel or maybe a flat whichever way I want to go if you have in your wardrobe currently pieces that you love pull out those pieces and when you're creating your six base I would strongly recommend that you sit down away from your closet and write down what really works the best for you so that you won't let your closet influence you but you really want to find out what do you wear and what do you grab or pay attention to what you grab on a frequent basis I know for me I grab a shawl I mean a like a wrap I grab it all the time I mean if I'm going out I just have a tendency to grab it I kind of throw it over my purse just if I need it and I just really enjoy having it so that's an accessory item for me that's really really important but if you don't ever dress like that or use that then don't do it and again I mentioned I'm using my examples but they, they have to apply for you this is you know I'm just give, using my me as an example okay so now let's take these same patterns and we're going to transition now into spring I'm going to use the same jacket and because I'm going to use the same jacket actually what I did is I did a three-quarter sleeve now again this is the navy denim the navy Italian denim and I used a little black leather just the, um, I used it for the collar up the front of the trim I used a zipper I didn't actually make it a functioning zipper I actually cut off um, the pull pulls right here I just cut off the very top and cut off the very bottom because I didn't need the length and so you can see on each side of the jacket um, and that's because the jacket itself is a dark navy and the trim was black so I just wanted a little bit of pop as far as coming down the front of the jacket and I really like it I really like it I love it on it's it's not lined um, it's lightweight and I'll go over kind of all that here in, in a little bit but I went ahead and made my winter jacket three-quarter sleeves because you can and then it was it's extremely appropriate for spring also it will transition all the way through it'll take me all the way through summer really it's almost year-round the jacket is and the reason you want that jacket to be a transitional piece is because it's the one that you're going to spend the most time making even if you don't line it you're still going to spend more time making a jacket clearly than you're going to do anything else okay then what I did is I did my skirt now instead of making it short I made it and I don't know that you'll be able to see it but I kind of made it long and flowy this is pattern 2850 um, we've had a webcast to make different versions of it I love this skirt it's great for summertime it's great to just wear it flat with heels I mean with flats it's wonderful Saturday morning going to farmers market or something along those lines just great to throw on a little skirt like this um, so this is a print I love the print and and just went to town on it then to go with it I wanted to have just a little simple t-shirt because the skirt has so much flair to it so I used my t-shirt pattern and I just did a solid black it's got texture to it it's a, a silk um, cloquet is what it's called um, we had it a little while ago we don't have it anymore uh, but I just love that I love the texture to it if I wanted to I could put on a little t-shirt and I could put on my little jacket because my jean jacket looks great with my skirt and just wear a little white t-shirt or, or carry off something different I want these pieces to all mix and match together so now what I did is instead of making jeans in blue I changed up the color a little bit I made a lighter pair so I made light blue but I would really encourage you to make a colored denim colored denim last year was really strong it's really strong again for spring so a really fun color works really well I did 575 and I did it in a linen just to transition it and make it bright again so that I could wear that with my jeans and then I did a great dress 
and like I said, I would wear, I'm would wear. i sure I'll wear this dress again and again. And almost every time I look at prints now, <laughs> I look at the prints and I say, oh, I could make 4014 out of that, Shelly's dress. So um, I think I've gone a little overboard. I'll be careful. I'll try to come out with a new dress pattern so I won't keep making the same dress pattern over and over. In fact, we, we are coming out with a new dress pattern for spring. And it's one that I am going to wear all summer because I love those little dresses. They're just really nice. Okay, so those are my six pieces. And do I have any question? On the six pieces, I did them once for, for winter. I did them again for spring. I just did a spring version of all of them. Made them shorter, longer, changed them up so that they look completely different. Someone said to me a little while ago, they were looking at a pattern and they said, no, I don't think I want that one. It's just too dressy. A pattern is not dressy. A pattern is not casual. A pattern is completely just what it is. It's a piece of tissue. What makes it casual is you. What makes it dressy is you. It's the fabric that you mix with it. It's the stitching. It's the trim. It's all of those things is, is what changes it up. But it's certainly not, um, you know, dressy or casual just simply by itself. All right, so let's go ahead and look at um, this jacket. This is unlined, and I think you all like unlined things. I don't think I know because I get a lot of emails saying I'm making this pattern and I don't want to line it. How can I do that? So obviously the first thing I do is I leave off the lining pieces. Is that just a no-brainer? So in this jacket, the lining pieces were the side lining, the side back lining, side front, sorry, side front, side back, and back, under sleeve and upper sleeve. There were five lining pieces. I pushed those away. When I started in the industry, you either, I learned, you either, there's two finishing techniques. You don't ever do both on a garment, it's too costly. You choose one, A or B. A is lining, B is surging. You don't surge if you're going to line, you don't line if you're going to surge. I know many times in the home industry we do because we have the luxury of time and we're not costing out our garment. But generally those two items are completely separate one from another. So in this case I was not lining so therefore I am surging. So when I started I literally surged around each piece of my jacket. So I just sat there it probably took me not even 30 minutes I just surged around every single piece. I do want to say to you about lining in general that many of you have an affinity to lining. I think we just um, you know, when I did the Toys for Tots jacket, I made the lining first. And the reason I do that is because of my, it takes about 30 minutes. My lining's all done. And once I have the jacket done, I can zip in that lining and I, I'm good to go. If you start making the lining once you've made the jacket, many of you default to, ah, I don't need the lining. I'm not going to do the lining. It doesn't need it. You know, <laughs> it's your choice, but I think you should really purposefully decide whether you're going to line it or not before you start. So in this particular case, um, I surged around every single piece. So you still need the front and you still need the front facing. Now this is a princess seam and so the way I'm going to anchor in my facing is to top stitch and I've already done the one side. I left this open to put the sleeve in but I'm going, I top stitched all the way down the front of the jacket and that's holding the lining in place so that lining, I mean the facing, I'm sorry, the facing can't come out. And I decided to do two pieces. I could have stopped right at the trim, but the jacket fabric itself is so lightweight I decided a second layer would be a positive. So the changes I made is this is a half inch shoulder pad and no lining. Everything else stayed the same. My leather trim is at the bottom of the uh, three quarter sleeve, sorry, is at the bottom of the sleeve. It's the pocket. It's down the front and then around and then I just used a little zipper insert for facing, for a little piping on both sides and just because I thought it needed some pop. Okay, so again, once I put the facing in, you need to have some way to anchor it down. Different patterns are going to be different depending on what the pattern looks like, but what the, what the lining does is it holds the facings in place and it keeps the jacket everything kind of going where it's supposed to be. If you leave that out then you'll end up with a jacket where facings are poking out, coming out, or doing whatever. So it's very easy generally to stitch something down or do something different. Okay, any questions? Linings, jackets, this jacket, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and set in a sleeve. I'm going to set in this last sleeve. I'm going to finish my jacket 
and then I want to talk about what I did with the shoulder pad. Because it's an unlined jacket, you want to cover the bottom of the shoulder pad so that when you look in the jacket, everything you see is finished. You see fabric, but you don't see a raw shoulder pad. Alright, we okay? Alright, can we move to the sewing machine? Alright. We're going to take a little move to the sewing machine. I've already got it on. Okay. So here I've got a couple pieces. I've got my sleeve. Lining again hems my sleeve. So the way I did this is I just folded my sleeve band in half and I surged it to the bottom of the sleeve and that little band hemmed my three-quarter sleeve. So in the case where you're doing a three-quarter sleeve and you don't want to do lining, you could do this band. You could even do it out of the same fabric. It's a great way to just finish off the bottom of a sleeve and it has a really nice look to it. All right, so the tie interfacing, it is a bias. I cut it in a bias. It's in every pattern that you get that has it in it, that pattern piece is going to be in it. I pulled it as I pulled it. I basted it around the cap. And when I get done with it, that's what I have. You can see that it's beautiful. The, the whole purpose is that the, and we're, not this week, but next week, we're doing a YouTube on it. So we'll get a close up on it. Um, I think a good discovery one of our customers made to us was that they really liked having the little mini lessons as far as sewing lessons on YouTube because they were faster to reference than going through the webcast and finding where the tie interfacing set in sleeve was. So we'll continue to do those. We've got a whole list of things we're doing. It'll probably take us through May to get out the agenda we've got right now, but they're all good things and they're all just construction techniques where we can kind of help you get there faster. Okay, so this is done. Um, I'm going, the whole concept though behind the tie interfacing is what I was saying is I cut a bias and I pull a bias and when I pull a bias and baste it in place with a long stitch then after I'm done stitching the bias retracts itself and it takes the sleeve with it. So it truly is easy. There's actually no gathers in there at all and it's only done on the 3 8 inch stitch line. It has to be a long stitch otherwise if you do it with a small stitch it can't retract itself so that's the reason for um, the bias and for the for the basting stitch. Notice that my tie interfacing is lined up with the raw edge. My tie interfacing is one inch wide so that when I go to fold it in half I don't get them coming to the same point. One is going to be wider. They're kind of layered and that tie interfacing holds the sleeve to where it gives a beautiful sleeve head and it never mats down. Okay? Looks beautiful. Just really looks beautiful. I've done it many many times in many many classes simple and it's really beautiful. Okay, so for my shoulder pad, I cut two, um, I used the selvage since that side of the denim was already finished, and I laid my shoulder pad down on the denim, and I just went ahead and cut a shoulder pad the size of the denim, a piece of fabric. So on the bottom of the shoulder pad, I'm going to put this selvage and don't sew through this edge. This is the straight edge of the shoulder pad or the thicker edge. Don't sew through that edge. Simply serge together this portion right in through here which is what I'm going to do on my serger. And because because my shoulder seam is narrower than my pad, I went ahead and I trimmed off some some width this way. It's just the it's just as the pad graduates to nothing, so I just trim some of that down. Now you see the bottom of my pad is all fabric and it's all finished. So once it's inside of my jacket, um, nothing of my shoulder pad will actually show. All right, that's my shoulder pad. Okay, so then let's go ahead and set the sleeve in. I've got the interfacing done. When you have a sleeve such as this, I'm going to fold it in half and the sleeve will mirror image itself. I'm going to put a pin at the top and a pin at the bottom. I get a lot of comments and questions about ladies who say to me about notches and about this. Um, you know, there's, the one, there's one point on a sleeve that needs to be correct and that one point is the dot at the top of the sleeve. And the reason that has to be correct is because 
the grain line hangs straight from that point. The grain line radiates down from that point. The notches here, I, you know, personally I never pay attention to them. I mean, I know that the French curve changes positions. I know why they're there. But as far as aligning them to the actual jacket, they don't have to be aligned. If they're off, it doesn't make any difference. As long as that top of the sleeve is there and the bottom of the sleeve is somewhat close, that's really the most important thing. So when we first came out with patterns, we didn't put any notches. And you know, I think we had women having coronaries as they opened the pattern. But I think my goal was to help educate you as to understand what the notches were rather than you becoming so dependent on them in your sewing. Okay, so I put the top one in place and then I'm going to work at both sides around because again, um, I don't want to move that one at the top. And I'm just going to literally kind of push that sleeve in. I've got my machine to sew on, I'm trying to put, hold this where you can see it. I've got my machine set to 3.0, it's a straight stitch. Use about maybe six pins, eight pins, something like that. I did put a pin at the bottom. I'm going to put that pin to the side seam. And then you can see that just beautifully fits in. Now when I did a one half inch shoulder pad, I tapered the shoulder seam down one half inch. And then because I wanted that smaller armhole, I took a half inch off the top of my cap. So I reduced my cap height and I reduced my armhole size by one inch. Everybody okay with that? Okay, my sleeve pins in really beautiful. Now what I'm gonna do is make sure my whole jacket is on my table, that way I won't get any pulling. And I'm actually going to sew with my sleeve side down. And it doesn't matter where you start or where you stop, you're just going to go all the way around the sleeve. I think some of us sew through pins and some of us don't, but I think it's probably just a really good habit to don't. <laughs> So I usually stop and pause and kind of take them out as I go around. Okay, so keep in mind that my tie interfacing is against the machine. My sleeve is against the machine. And my jacket is up. And that's simply because the machine will pull the bottom layer because of the feed dog. You don't want to have, if you have a differential feed on your machine, you don't want it in place. You don't need it in place. You want to let the machine do what it does best, which is ease in the bottom layer. Questions? Are we okay with this? Why the reduction? Why did I? That's simply completely a style choice done on my side. Be to me, because it is a unlined denim jacket, uh, to me it said a little more casual. To me it said a hat. You know, it, it's just my interpretation of the style of a denim jacket. That's the only reason I did it. Um, it's not necessary. If you still want to stay with the one inch, it's fine. Okay, whoops. All right, so I would now put all, I would press all of this out into the sleeve. The bottom part of the sleeve will naturally go in. This portion will have to be pressed. When it is, um, this half inch shoulder pad, the ones we sell, have a cut. And the cut is not in the middle. The longer portion is the front because we have a hollow in the front of our chest. The shorter portion is the back doesn't need a shoulder pad. So I'm going to put I'm going to put the cut right at the shoulder seam and I'm going to put the longer portion to the front, the shorter portion to the back. I'm going to hold it there. Now I would I need to sew this in, but for right now I'm just going to flip it to the outside and you can see that there's my sleeve. And it's a beautiful sleeve. Just looks gorgeous. 
Everybody okay with that? When I do this, I anchor in my shoulder my shoulder pad in three places. I anchor it at the front, at the bottom of that shoulder pad, in the back at the bottom of the shoulder pad, and then because it's underneath my shoulder here, I, I'll put it underneath my facing and just stitch in the ditch or or to the seam allowance on the inside, either or. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, and that, once I got that shoulder pad in, I'm going to top stitch my facing all the way down in place. And then the, the last thing I didn't do because it was an unlined jacket is I'm going to stitch all the way around at right at the base of this um, leather, the, the neckline trim, so where it just holds the two layers in place together just to give it a little more, um, I don't know, stability. I think stability is the best word. This side where I've stitched I can just, these pieces are acting as one, even though there's two, and I really like the way, and when I've seen Ready to Wear, I, I, it does have a tendency to have more stitching when it's unlined versus when it's lined. So I really like the look that this has. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Let me just kind of button this up here, and our jacket is finished. Put your tag in so that it has a nice little hanger appeal there, and you're good to go. All right, easy enough? Unlined jackets. I honestly don't think they save time. I know that sounds really weird. People think, oh, an unlined jacket is much easier than a line jacket. I don't think it really is. I've done both. Um, I think a line jacket is so quick and easy. It covers up, you know, you, you really have to do a lot more precise sewing when it's unlined. I'm, that probably sounds opposite of what it should be, but when it's unlined, everything kind of has to be exactly right, whereas it's lined, the lining covers up kind of a myriad of sins, if that's the way I can say it. So it's your preference, it's your jacket. Um, I've had so many requests for unlined jacket, I really wanted to do one. And I like it, and I love the jacket. I mean, on, it looks amazing. It just, it's really, really stylish. Uh, but it definitely took more time for me than if I had lined it. Okay, just an FYI. Okay. All right, so we've got just a couple of minutes left. Can we answer any questions? I have one trivia question. I'm going to ask it live. We're not going to ask it through um, the webcast. Are we getting a delay? 30 second delay. So everybody will get the same delay? <laughs> okay, so our trivia question is we have a very important birthday tomorrow. If anybody can guess whose birthday it is tomorrow, we'll win. All right, so if you can guess whose birthday it is tomorrow, you'll win $50 worth of Silhouette Pattern product. And you'll have to email me tomorrow. We won't do it in your box because that will make our birthday boy work a little bit more. So we're going to go ahead and if um, I'll have Brett just say the name of who won and we will, I'll, I'll send you an email. I'll send you an email with a coupon code tomorrow. Lori wins. Okay, Lori, whose birthday is it tomorrow? It is Brett's birthday. Happy birthday, Brett. Laura B. Laura B., would you email me, Peggy, at silhouettepatterns.com. I don't want the birthday boy to have to work. He's off tonight. <laughs> anyway, um, if you'll email me, I'll send you a coupon code. I'll create it and get it back to you. All right? All right. Any other questions we can answer? Okay. Yeah, let's take a minute and answer them. I know we're close to time, but let's take a few minutes and answer them. Okay, we're going to go back to standing. All right, I can do that. Any kind of fabrics can be used for lining. The goal of lining is that they should be slippery. The goal of lining is so that you can get it off and on so that it just kind of glides over, you know, what you have on underneath. So don't limit yourself with, with linings. There's lots of great ideas. Um, if, if you like it, put it inside. I mean, there's people who line with um, felt, or not felt, but what's that stuff called? That flannel. Uh, you know, or they put a flannel liner in. You know, it's all good. But I would, over that, maybe put a lining of slip. Because when I put my jackets on, I don't like something I have getting caught up. So anything that's slippery, whether it be polyester, silk, it will all slip. Polyester doesn't breathe as much. Well, you know, that's not true. That's the old polys. The new polys breathe wonderful. So you've got a lot of options when it comes to linings. All right. 
What size zipper did I use? I used a regular, oh, for the cape, I'm sorry, same zipper, same zipper. Um, I just used a separating zipper that was, I, d I think it went the length of the seam. Um, if it didn't go the whole length, I just turned whatever was left. This particular seam is, uh, let me just show it to you real quick. It, this is the back of pattern 83. So along this, you've got an armhole, you've got two armholes, and then you have a seam in between. So if it wasn't quite long enough, I just made the armhole bigger. I can't remember. I don't think it was quite long enough. And then I just, there's a seam in the middle. So just split the seam and put the zipper on both and then just make the rest to be an armhole. And it works great. It's great as a gift too. If you've got just somebody that you really care about and you, you know, it doesn't, it takes like maybe a yard of fabric, it's really a great little gift. Okay, questions? The top is pattern number 315. It's new. It will come out next Tuesday, not tomorrow, a week from next Tuesday. We will have all the patterns up this week. We'll have them. If you go to the front page, it'll say spring 2015 patterns. So you can just look them over, but the sale actually won't start. The pre-sale will not actually start until next Tuesday morning when you get the email. Okay? We good? Thanks so much for watching us tonight, ladies. We really and gentlemen, I've really been raked over the clothes for that. All of you, guys, men, boys, sons, thanks so much for watching. Happy sewing, and we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks a lot. Good night. Stay warm up there in the east, northeast.